All right, well, we're five minutes in and I'm glad to see so many people joined us as you all probably noticed. I know I've been saying that I'm going to be making some updates about um, access to the events that we're having, updating the SALT community website and some of that stuff has already been implemented. And so going forward, all of the open hours will be posted on the SALT community site as well as elsewhere. I do I did not get the community interest survey up to date yet. I want to let you all know that, you know, I've been saying I'm going to get a community interest survey and it's going to discuss kind of everybody's communication preferences as well as ways you would like to collaborate with our group. The reason that's not done is actually a good thing. This week, the thing that got bumped to the top of my priority list is that SALT events are for the foreseeable future all going virtual. And so this morning I saw somebody had requested in the community Slack help with virtual events. And I was able to say that starting April 15th, we will start having weekly virtual meetups. I'm very excited about this. So the cadence for them is going to be, the first one is going to be one of our engineers, Tyler. He is going to be speaking on POP. And on April 15th, he's going to be giving that talk for our audience in the Americas in those time zones. So it'll happen in the evenings in the Americas. The following week, he's going to be doing it during the time that um, coordinates with evenings in Europe and Africa. And so one of the plans for the meetup cadence is that at least two meetups per month will be the same talk, the same presentation at different time slots so more people can attend. And then we'll be having other speakers come in and give talks. One thing that I'd like to do with the virtual meetups is I know some people in our community are out speaking about SALT and I would love to have some of you all present as well at some of the meetups. So I'll be putting out a more formal call for speakers and some details, but please let me know if you're interested in presenting. I'll get you on a schedule. My plan is to have eight to 12 weeks worth of meetups queued up, ready to go virtually for everybody. And then on a related note, some members on the team here are working on some other kind of collaboration opportunities where throwing around ideas of a code jam. Some of these open hours will work kind of as clinics about a specific topic. We're in the works of scheduling a testing clinic. And there was something else, code jam. oh, um, like DevOps days and things. So we're just trying to find ways to, right now with everything so challenging and everybody so disconnected, trying to find ways to keep everybody together, engaged, collaborating and learning. And so please let me know if there are events you'd like to see virtually or meetups that you would like to have. The other thing about the meetups, one nice thing about meetups going virtual is now we, it's going to be easier for us to implement meetups in languages other than English. So we're working on one in Germany and potentially one with a French based speaker as well. So that stuff will all be updated on the community website and the Google calendar will be updated. And so you can find information about upcoming meetups there. So that's the, the exciting news on my end as we do everything. And then on another kind of related collaborative note, one thing we'd like to start doing is having some of our work group captains give updates as well in these open hours. And so let us know what you're working on. Let us know where you can contribute and help. I know that the test and the SSH and documentation, several of the work groups have some really exciting things happening or some areas where they might need help. And so I'll be reaching out to work group captains to see if any of you are interested in giving us updates during these open hours. I think that's about all I have on my end is just everything's going online. And I wanted to let you all know that that's been something we've been working on full force really running with this week. Yeah, good point, Mo. It's community.saltstack.com. That will eventually be kind of the landing page for all things community. We'll be putting some blog po posts, um, featured contributors, all sorts of things up there as well as the events. And that will be in addition to the usual communication channels of Slack and IRC. So pick your, your poison or your preferred means of communication, I guess. Does anybody have questions about meetups or virtual events right now? And for those who can't attend virtual meetups, those will also be up on YouTube afterwards. So you'll be able to, there'll be a meetup playlist. So you'll be able to access that information that way as well. 
Um, rest of the things on the agenda, we're going to talk about freezing and thawing master branch, talk a little bit about the backlog, quick update on two-factor authentication, and then of course just open this for conversation for everybody. So with that, I'm not sure who's covering freezing and thawing of master branch, but take that away. Was that Daniel, Daniel or, or Megan, do either one of you want to do that? Uh, yeah, I can talk about the uh, yeah. we discussed. Um, obviously, we're still in a feature freeze, but there's been a long time since the release. And so we discussed um, maybe a better way to approach that for next time. We're um, very close to getting 3000.1 out, so we're going to continue with the freeze for now. Um, but we discussed uh, next uh, time that we keep it to that limit of two to three weeks post release to keep the feature freeze. If we can't get the release out by then, um, then we'll branch off and start working off of that so we can make sure we're not freezing anymore. So that's what we discussed. And I think. Um... It might be worthwhile, Megan, just offline to also share um, sort of a quick update on um, um, a link back to our release cadence and timeline. For those who are joining us new or are not familiar with when we transitioned to 3000, what that sort of cadence, we have a lot of that documented team and we will make that link available. So the idea is once we finish 3000, as Megan said, there is a very specific window of time to address the high priority and critical issues, and then we roll into the next release. And that cadence and timetable has uh, all been documented and available. So we can, uh, we can share that for sure. If people want to access that cadence and timetable and documentation, where would they, where would they go? Are you referring to the set mode? Yes, sorry. Okay. Yeah, let me yep. post the link here. Let me get it and I'll post it in the Zoom. Okay. Again, for those who are new or not familiar with this or joining us for the first time, it's been a topic we've talked about um, and it's never hurtful to just cover the basics again and again, as this is a new process for all of us and we're shifting that. So. Yeah, so I guess to give some background and context, sort of thought about that. Um, it, for, for those who don't know me, I'm Cassandra Ferris, I'm the community manager here at SaltStack. And we've been um, implementing these meetings. Basically what we do is we, we take feedback from the community, frequently ask questions, comments, um, things that you'd like to see updated or like clarification on. And the goal of these meetings is to discuss those things and work together to find solutions to maybe some of the problems and hiccups that we're working through. And so to date, we've started even the weekly open hours are something that have come out of these open hour meetings. And so that's something that we're working on. So we definitely invite you to speak up and participate in these conversations. That's a great point, Jim. I, uh, I know that we've done some work with Suze in the past, so, um, and I know that some of our other team members are working with you all. So definitely let me know, you know, if you have thoughts about how we could work together, or collaborate together, we discuss that in more detail. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about the backlog. Obviously, this is a be a touchy subject. Um, we have a lot of things in our backlog. We are one of the things we're prioritizing for this release is to work through the backlog. And Wayne and I have gone back and forth on some ideas around this. I'm going to have Wayne cover this section of the meeting, but we, we are working to reduce the backlog and we are working to find ways to, some community members have expressed an interest in helping to um, address some of the backlog and so we'll be working on ways to maybe get together and do like a code jam or something for that but is Wayne on and does he have anything to add 
<clears throat> yeah, I'm here. Um, just so I got some, some more flavor. So there are two, two portions of our uh, backlog, or maybe even three, that um, uh, are kind of the, the three major uh, items that we have. One is just the backlog of issues that we've got. Uh, then we also have a backlog of pull requests. And then we also have um, pull requests that um, as that were merged into other branches. Um, and for those who, who also don't know this piece, um, when we, we used to be uh, running like three major releases uh, at any time. So we could have up to, I think we, the most we had was eight branches of development that we were trying to maintain uh, at, at any given time. And that was just uh, not working well. So we changed to the more common single branch release strategy. Uh, but as we did that, there was a bunch of work that went into these other different branches. So we committed to making sure those, um, all those, uh, all that work got ported into our master branch. Um, I think currently we have about 900 uh, some odd uh, pull requests that are still needing that merge or that port to master. So we're working through that as well. Um, so we've discussed a couple of ideas around um, maybe having a, you know, kind of hackathon code jam where we just get together and port as many of those PRs to master as possible. Um, many of them, the good news is that many of them can be automated. Um, there aren't any merge conflicts and we can just uh, cherry pick those merges in, into the master branch. Um, but a substantial uh, portion of those PRs will have uh, merge conflicts. So we are going to need some manual work to, to go in and uh, and actually solve those merge conflicts. Um, and then another challenge is that many of these were merged before we were requiring tests uh, and passing tests to merge code uh, into master. So we still are going to require tests to merge this, uh, these um, changes into the master branch. Um, so what is going to happen is we've got to write tests for those. So we've discussed um, different ways to approach that, um, but there's definitely a, a substantial amount of work uh, and effort that's going to go into that as well. So um, that's another thing that we've talked about is um, you know, doing a, a test clinic where we actually uh, walk people through, hey, this is how to write a test. Um, these are how to, to run SALTS tests because every test framework is different um, and ours is no exception to that rule. Um, so just kind of helping people learn how to run, run tests and write tests um, and what kind of tests we're expecting for pull requests um, and um, you know, just working on some of that, those are all all things that are are needed, and we are working to put some plans in place uh, to actually uh, bring those bar the backlog down to a uh, a much smaller size. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to a lot of the the things that we've got on our on the in the pipeline, um, but it's also a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of just behind the scenes logistics involved all of this stuff, little things like time zones. I guess those aren't little things, but figuring out what time works for the most people at once is a, a whole challenge in itself and then dates and not conflicting with other things. So the logistics take a lot of time and then um, the events can run pretty smoothly after that. Anything else, Wayne, or anybody else? No backlog? I think uh, just uh, to underscore one thing uh, that Wayne said, um, we have been getting these requests from the team members to schedule those test clinics. So again, please, if uh, anybody listening to this uh, offline or those who are with us here live today, if you want to be part of that, if you want to participate, please send it to Wayne or uh, to Cassandra. Um, I think we have one coming up either in a week or two. 
um, and, and that will be advertised through Cassandra, uh, through the various channels. But we're excited for that. Uh, we held informal ones in the past, and the feedback has been um, very helpful, uh, you know, because not everybody's familiar with all parts of SALT, et cetera. And so just thinking through how we would do the tests and what are the elements we, uh, we address, I think will be valuable. So please, please reach out, get yourself booked up. Um, we anticipate that we'll run a couple of those. Uh, but the sooner you get familiar with it, the sooner we all as a community can just benefit from, from that skill and experience as we work to burn down uh, our PRs and the backlogs that we have. Yeah. Excellent, thanks. And another thing too um, that I forgot to mention is that uh, if you have questions about developing um, on Salt or, or how you can, um, like if you've got an idea for a feature that you want to work on, uh, you can bring that idea to the open hour and say, hey, can you guys give me some feedback on this? And then we'll, we can walk through and, and kind of discuss what those ideas are and what are the pros and cons and whatever uh, else we need to do to kind of hash out that work. So it's not, uh, you know, if you want a little bit tighter feedback loop, that's definitely an option for you. Yeah, and there will be a Google form in place so that if there's something that you'd like to bring up in an open hour, you can even submit it ahead of time and we can make sure to put it on the agenda so you'll know when your concern, your suggestion, your comment is going to be addressed. And the cadence for that will be, we'll release the agenda input form. We'll close those on Tuesdays. I'll finalize the agenda on Wednesdays and publish it and do that every week. All right, Sage, GitHub to factor authentication. Yeah, before we do that, I do want to just say that for, for our PR process, we realized that um, we needed to dive into that a little bit deeper. And during our planning session, we were able to do that and take a look at where we have some bottlenecks. And we're trying to address some of those and also create more transparency with the community on what we're working on. So uh, this is a work in progress. I will uh, share this out and, um, and link to it. I've created a, a board a project board in GitHub to show what's unassigned. You can see that the unassigned doesn't have anything in it just yet. I haven't quite gotten there, but I will. Um, and then uh, you, you see that some things are assigned, but they're not yet in progress necessarily. Uh, those should then move over to in progress and then to done. And this should show uh, quite a bit more transparency as what we're working on. We're also going to try to burn through this and um, take a look at what our burn rate is and then try to increase that as we look at ideas like code jams and um, assigning them out and trying to get those reviewed, how we can uh, work to burn that down faster and if there's something else we need to be doing internally or externally and, and getting ideas for that. So just wanted to um, make sure that people saw that as well and I'll go ahead and link to this in the chat. Um, and we'll be doing more here as we, uh, as we go but wanted to make sure people saw this. Yeah, this was uh, the number one requested item uh, coming into our planning session from the community, which is, can we get visibility into which PRs are being worked uh, by the core team uh, and or of course the extended team members. So now easily everybody in the community can look at the 138 that have been assigned out and being in progress, I think that was the number. Um, I need my glasses. <laughs> well, right now, there's probably more. That's the number. Probably yes, more. right now. <laughs> there's 138 in there. Um, and that's the one that the team, uh, in addition, as we continue to share the information more broadly, openly and transparently with all of us, uh, and you know, thanks to Sage and, and Wayne and Cassandra and, and the broad team, as we built uh, the basic infrastructure behind it, um, you'll also be able to start to see what our burn uh, rate is so that we anticipate for the ports, uh, when will those be done? You know, sodium versus magnesium versus aluminium. Um, and further, aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. And, and further, <laughs> aluminum. <laughs> um, uh, we don't want to get into the who's older because they win. So there you go. <laughs> um, so we will, um, we'll, we'll show that. And then more importantly, of course, is just the amazing and overwhelming um, gratitude for everybody that's been reaching out and saying, hey, how can I help? Uh, so having that board also gives all of us a view. So feel free to pick up one of those PRs, work on them, build the tests, 
uh, you know, just help us get through that process. Uh, you know, our goal is to continue to get the process of the PRs open to merge to be as short amount of time as possible. So that's what we are holding ourselves internally accountable for. And it's not something that the core team can do alone. It can only be done with everybody's help. So Sage, I appreciate you sharing that because that was, um, it was a nice surprise to get there at this ahead of uh, the next call and the, um, it was requested broadly by everybody. Yeah, and it is a work in progress. So um, we'll continue to work on it, make it look a little better and, and try to give more transparency. This but is I all. Oh, go on. Yeah. This is all that helps. It's all it heard. Judging by, uh, <laughs> judging yeah. by uh, Stu's, you know, picture avatar, he's very excited by what you just showed him. Oh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So to talk about two-factor authentication, we are going to uh, start requiring that of the people that we've um, invited to our org and GitHub. It is fairly important to us. I've reached out to several people and had lots of people um, respond positively and, and that's going very well. We are uh, looking for another week to um, communicate out and make sure that people know that that's what we would like to do and, and how we can help you to do that. And, um, and then we'll, we'll unfortunately start taking away access and start making it happen. But so far it's been really positive and it, it's been great to interact with everybody to just make that happen. So if anybody has questions about that, if you're part of a working group, um, and, uh, or if you've been invited to the org and you don't have two-factor enabled on your, on your GitHub, we would really like to have that. If you need some help with that, reach out to me or Cassandra or Mo or anybody on the core team. We'll be happy to help you with that. And we'll be sending more communication before we start taking away any access, which that won't start for another week, March 6th. So any, any questions about that? Great. All right, well, that covers our set agenda. So definitely willing to open up for questions that people might have, um, some of you who are newer, or if anybody has feedback input, please feel free to post that in the chat or speak up and we can uh, talk about those things here. Yeah, I'll get us started perhaps, Cassandra, from one that came into my uh, Slack DM in here. Uh, so there was just a question, which is, um, sorry if I missed it, uh, can you cover the status of 3000.1 and Outlook for Sodium? Um, Megan, maybe you can cover that one? Yeah. Um, so we're in the testing phase. We found a couple more issues. Um, I asked QA to create some issues and we'll tag those 3000.1 so everybody can see those. Um, it's issues with the, the packaging. So once those are resolved, then we'll go back to packaging and testing the packaging. Um, so um, we're really close for we'll to get out next week um, for 3000.1 and then sodium um, the goal is June and I this slipping my mind what the feature freeze date is I think it was in May I can't remember yeah I, I think, think that's right was, okay yes I think May 13th, you said. yeah May 13th or so on okay. I think so that is the update there. If anybody has anything to add. The biggest, most recent question that I had seen was the one that came up this morning where people were asking about social distancing and how to enable meetups. And so I was glad to see other people thinking about that. That was Christian McHugh who said that, so thank you. Um, and that's what we're here. We're here, we have the Zoom capabilities. We have the ability to support things that can span the time zones and locations. So that was the only request I've received this week. Anybody else questions? I had another one just come in, Cassandra. Um, I always find communication channels to be fascinating because people use all of them. So I don't know why I'm getting them on Slack directly. Um, but this one is just asking, 
uh, are we still on track to have tornado update for sodium? Diwaz, maybe you can give an update uh, on that one. Sure, um, I believe we still are on track for that. Um, we're targeting to have tornado six in sodium. Uh, right now, uh, the, there's kind of two issues. One's on Windows. Uh, I have not looked into those yet. Uh, the other issue is with uh, TCP transport. Um, there's some communication issues between the uh, Salt and Master and Salt Minion when trying to use the TCP transport and tornado, newer tornadoes. So still working on that. Um, that one's proving to be fairly difficult, uh, but I do have some things that I'm looking at currently to try to resolve it. Any other questions on that? Thank you, Diwaz. I, I didn't get anything here, but please feel free to, um, to vocalize or in the chat, if there's any follow-up, Diwaz, please reach out to him on Slack and we'll get the up to the minute update on Tornado. Because, you know, I asked Diwaz, what breakfast did you have today? And he's like, Tornado cereal. You know, what, what coffee did you have? Tornado Java. You know, he's been living and breathing tornado. Oh, Max Arnold has a question. What about packaging salt for the upcoming Ubuntu 20.04? Oh, and the formulas work group. I saw that question first. That is something that we've discussed. The last that we talked about it was maybe a month and a half ago or so. And at the time they decided, or a couple people decided they weren't didn't think that there was a need for a formulas work group right now because I guess y'all are doing a lot of that work in Google. But if you want to make a formulas work group, we can absolutely do that. The main thing when making a work group is we just need somebody to lead it, then I can help facilitate schedule and advertise it. So if there's interest in the formulas work group, please speak up now, let me know on Slack and we can make that happen. We have already done that with the documentation work group. There was a lot of interest in that and a community member stepped up to help kind of co-lead it with one of, our, one of our internal people. And we're three months into that work group now and it's going really well. So yeah, we can absolutely make that happen. Just let me know when and if you'd like to do that. Yeah, I think uh, maybe in the survey you mentioned, um, Cassandra, that could be another one to also gauge interest um, f from the folks around it, because this seems to be seasonal, the formulas war group, you know, it comes up and then it kind of drops and comes up. Um, I think there's a lot of value always, uh, frankly, in a few folks coming together as a war group to, to tackle some of the common interests and ambitions around that part of the project. So maybe it will start small and grow from there as, as, as things pick up, just like we saw with the cloud war group. Uh, I think that's kind of now mushroomed. It, it, it will need to have its own kind of chapters within it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we really don't need more than a handful of people to make a work group happen. Like three to five people seems fine initially um, to get those things going. somebody just acknowledged there is interest so yeah i think we'll, we'll act on it uh, quickly and, and give an update yeah uh, go ahead and ping me on or dm me on slack and we can start this conversation um, and start talking through maybe some of the logistics and things okay and then the next question was packaging for salt 20.04, can somebody take that please? Yeah, Bryce, or are you still on? I yeah. can do that. Um, yeah, right, David, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'll let Bryce go. What was the question? 
um, uh, packaging for the upcoming Ubuntu 2004? As far as I'm aware, we're going to wait for sodium on that. That's right, but we, uh, just to let you guys know, we are working on that uh, packaging for that, for the sodium release. There's work underway. I think that's what the question is, right? Yeah, the question is uh, the upcoming, uh, you know, package. And so it's not for 3000 but one, it is for sodium. And that's what David Murphy and Bryce are uh, working through. Um, Bryce is probably still in 3000.1 land. So he's like, we're waiting for sodium for that. Yes, that will be probably Monday or Tuesday um, as we shift into the packaging for those. Thank you, Max, for the question. Oh, um, I have another question in here. Can we provide an update on Pi 2 support? Is that being officially dropped for sodium? Megan, do you want to do this? Yeah, please go ahead. That's kind of been my, my big project for sodium. So yes, we are dropping Python 2 for sodium. Um, a lot of that work is going to be starting in the next couple of weeks. Um, we, this release, just to kind of give you an update, we decided we're not going to be doing any intentional work towards like, hey, we're going to get this stuff dropped from Python 2 code, but we will accept dropping Python 2 code. And then in the next coming releases, we have a plan to specifically start dropping things like, if it's Python 2, do this, um, and, and, and uh, things like that, uh, getting rid of futures. Um, and then there's a tool uh, that will actually help you determine what in your code is Python 2. Um, and so in the uh, two releases, that's what we're going to run and try, and try to clean up the code there. So uh, that's kind of the plan for Sodium. Um, yeah, anybody has any questions? So make Actually, sure we're not packaging for Python 2, right? Yeah, we're not packaging for Python 2. Nope. There is actually just a question that says, is the testing work group still active and how do I join it? Um, Pedro, I think you can help us with that one. Maybe just give an update and then uh, I'll actually send the link to the work groups. So sorry, I should just preface this. If you joined us a little bit later, um, Cassandra kicked off the call um, sharing that we do now have a community.stallstack.com page, which is actually linked in the chat section of the Zoom earlier on. You'll find that a lot of our blogs, uh, events, war group meetings that you can join and register for are all there. Um, so you should be able to see the testing work group in there and join that as sort of a logistical answer. But I think, Pedro, it will also be worthwhile to give uh, an update on the activity, please. So the uh, upfront answer to the question is yes, the thought testing work group is still active. Um, we gather uh, once a month uh, to say what we've been doing and to plan for the next month of what we will be doing, what we need to do, and stuff like that. Um, We've created some um, major tasks that we want to tackle as time goes by. And we actually last meeting, we were kind of prioritizing that and see what we have completed yet and what was still there to complete. Um, one of the tasks that um, some of the members of the SALT testing working group are doing is actually uh, picking up the pull requests that need to be ported into master and see what else they need um, to be added. For example, some are missing tests. Uh, and so uh, we are trying to add some tests to those as time goes by. So yeah, um, if you like testing um, or want to know more about testing, uh, feel free to join. 
if you have any troubles, feel free to ping. Um, as a side note, we are uh, actively, actively trying to make the testing process on the salt easier for contributors. Um, and so on the next couple of months, we will have great and exciting, exciting news of how to test and uh, it should be way simpler for uh, people to uh, start doing that. And to add on to what Pedro had to say, so there's not really a formal process to joining a work group. In addition to finding them on the Community Salt Stack website, there's a Google Calendar that you can subscribe to that's all of the salt community events. Um, I'll share that link out here in a second, but really all it takes to join a work group is to show up to the meeting and contribute. And um, if you happen to miss a meeting, we do post those on YouTube, so you can visit those on our YouTube channel afterwards. But Really, it just takes showing up and saying, hey, I'm willing to help out. So just a follow on question, was the documentation work group started? Uh, the answer is yes. That actually uh, is another work group that got kicked off, started and actually active. Um, and that's another um, opportunity, especially for folks who are new to the project. Uh, you know, as you're trying to seek information and you may find that then uh, some of the data might be missing that you would have expected and so on. It's a wonderful opportunity to give input uh, to that group as they try to modernize and uh, make the documentation and so on more complete. Um, so feel free to please, whether you're an expert or a newcomer to the project, uh, to go ahead and engage with that. And as Wayne said, the, the documentation work group meeting, thank you Wayne for that, is actually happening right after this call. I don't have anything else that came through Slack, Cassandra. I don't either. I do have the, I just shared the link on the community events work group. Um, yep, the documentation work group is today. The next meeting of the test work group is April 8th. I just checked that as well. So. So now we enter the 60 seconds plus of silence. If you have any questions thinking through, through those, please post them in the chat. There's always one more question. <laughs> Who's going to be the one to ask it? I call it the meditation zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, one come through Slack. Um, oh, <laughs> absolutely. I think that's very appropriate. Um, can you comment? Um, sorry, I lost it. Let me find it. Can you comment on salt stack preparedness for the COVID-19 virus? Okay. So the question um, that just came in is to just comment around our um, uh, preparedness for the virus. Um, and actually a uh, few of the clients who are also on the commercial side, you know, uh, we've been reaching out to them. So thank you for the question. Of course, very opportune uh, and very timely. A couple of comments to be made. Number one, um, not just as a company, but as a community, um, you know, we are watching out for the events that are happening around us uh, and wanting to make sure that everybody within the company and our broader community uh, are all uh, hopefully healthy, safe, um, you know, taking all the necessary uh, precautions uh, that are being advised by the health authorities, um, you know, to continue to be in, in you know, in, in, a, in the best sort of position possible. Uh, and I genuinely, on behalf of the company and this particular team, say that we do view ourselves as a community. So should anybody need help or support uh, because of changes in conditions uh, that are occurring either in your workplace uh, or the timeliness of some of the um, um, you know, uh, needs that you have around the SOLT platform, please reach out. Uh, you know, we are here for each other. So that's just a broad statement. Uh, the company itself has moved into work from home uh, policy, uh, perhaps maybe about a week and a half ago or two weeks. 
that in itself was, of course, the most uh, obvious uh, precaution uh, to make sure that everybody is not needing to, uh, for those who are office-based, don't need to go back to our offices in Salt Lake City. And then, of course, uh, for those who are remote, uh, that's a continuation, of course, uh, through that with particular work practice. Uh, so as a team, uh, we've been um, you know, diligent in making sure that we take advantage of that. Thankfully for all of us who are in tech, um, you know, working remote uh, comes a little bit more easier than perhaps a lot of those who are affected uh, through the traditional, um, you know, physical world where they need to go to retail stores and so on and so forth. Um, so it might be a little bit easier for us to transition, but we're also recognizing that many of our uh, clients and so on who may be from retail stores or so on are affected by that. So should anything arise team that um, and community that you think will be of help, uh, please, you know, reach out to us. Uh, lastly, and this is uh, mostly to just acknowledge the work ethic, uh, the culture and uh, the gratitude that we all have for each other. Um, there has just been an incredible amount of um, uh, Samaritan behavior by many of our team members in the company, uh, those who are either contributing financially uh, or going out and uh, making themselves available uh, to colleagues. You know, moving and getting locked in a house is not easy. Um, um, you know, we, uh, we are very, very much focused on our colleagues in Europe as, you know, things are shifting a little bit more prominently there uh, and making sure that we support them. Uh, so even getting on the phone through virtual coffees and so on and so forth is a simple act that we've been, uh, as a company, encouraging to do, to be there for one another. Uh, from a, a business context, we have a business continuity plan. Uh, we're exercising that business continuity plan. So uh, as I said, our, we've been reaching out to some of the commercial clients who have asked. Uh, if you are looking or concerned about support, please um, know, rest assured that the team is there on standby. We have a global international company. We have you know, colleagues uh, out in the Philippines and Russia, uh, various parts of Europe, uh, Latin America and so on. And around the clock, we've been able to help and support many of our clients. Uh, automation, of course, as you all know, all of us as a community know, uh, is something that can actually have an impact uh, in this current climate. It's something that uh, can simplify, uh, you know, make sure that people don't necessarily need to go and visit um, data centers as often and so on and so forth. And we've actually been hearing some stories back from some, uh, some of the users of the project around how it's been beneficial for them to further deploy the automation. So we uh, recognize that people are uh, expanding the use of the platform and we are standing by to support them and help them. Hopefully that was a comprehensive enough uh, of an answer, uh, but if there's anything else any of the colleagues want to add, uh, please go ahead and, and share that. Yeah, definitely to add on to what Mo said, this has been a big conversation among those of us who lead different communities. I'm in a, a peer group of different community managers and developer relations professionals, and there's been a lot of talk about how to help support our communities when we can't get together at these in-person events, whether they're meetups, they're conferences, they're whatever. And this is where I'm, I'm a textbook extrovert. Like I love being around people. And right now I'm very grateful for technology because it helps us stay connected. It's helping us find ways to collaborate. And it's quite frankly, it's creating new opportunities. Like we can now have weekly meetups. And once this is all resolved, I plan to continue virtual meetups as a supplement. The other thing that I think is an interesting side effect of putting everything remote is that having remote meetups, having virtual events actually makes things more accessible for a lot of people who couldn't necessarily maybe attend events after work in person or who don't live in areas that have those events. So I'm really excited that this allows us to maybe include more people into our community and into our events. And that's really what a community is. And that's really what a community does is support one another. So that's where I'm seeing things on my end. Yeah, thank you, Cassandra. It looks like uh, we dried up on the questions. I don't have any. I don't know if the other team members got any. Um, and I think the chat is, is there. So maybe the, the biggest reminder for me walking out of this call, other than SALT 3000 is imminently around the corner, sodium is on track for June, is really the one, Cassandra, you kicked us off with, which is um, please anticipate that we're going to be getting uh, many more virtual events. 
uh, going very shortly. There's actually been, uh, as, as Cassandra said, demand for that. So you're going to hear directly from some of our core team members. Uh, but I also know that many of our community would love to hear from each other. Uh, if you've recently deployed SALT in an interesting way, if you have some best practices you want to share, uh, or even if you want to talk about formulas, for example, uh, how you've been using formulas and uh, gauge some of the community members' reactions to that, uh, be, please feel free to just reach out to us. We'll have the platform ready for you and all the logistics to support you uh, in delivering that. That to me, I think, is, is uh, one of the active takeaways. And then please volunteer for the testing work group. Is that fair, Cassandra? Was yeah. I a good listener? Yes, and that gives me an idea. So if they're, say for instance, three or four, four people want to share what they're doing with formulas or share what they're doing with some other aspect of SALT, there's no reason we can't make one of the meetups be a panel. And then you don't have the pressure of putting together a full talk, but have kind of a panel or round table discussion about what you're doing. So if there's interest in that, I mean, we have a lot of flexibility. I've been organizing meetups for years and years, so I can certainly help with that. Um, some more logistical things. So I have been taking notes the whole time so that we will have a summary of notes that I will be able to publish along with the videos. Uh, videos will get posted on Friday afternoons. They go live on Saturdays. And so if you miss any of these meetings, you can read the notes or watch the video. And if you need toilet paper, Wayne is selling, but he's only limiting two per customer. Stingy, we get three here in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There's not <laughs> anything on the shelves in California. So just FYI, nothing. <laughs> Costco's not accepting returns on any of that stuff. So all the people that have bought thousands of bottles of hand sanitizer and all the toilet paper, they're not going to be able to return it when the crisis is over. So. Ah, interesting. I, I can well, a lot picture. Of people do during hurricanes. Yeah, they buy a bunch of stuff and return it. I, I can picture the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York or the Louvre having an exhibition of toilet paper art uh, <laughs> coming up soon. Yeah, our, our colleagues that are in Utah did experience the earthquakes yesterday. They do seem to be doing just fine. I don't think that uh, there's any more news than that, but interesting. Uh, that it's not getting more attention. I think that uh, coronavirus is getting it all. So <laughs> yeah. glad you guys are okay out there. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us. I really appreciate the participation, the questions. This is what we want the open hours to be. Um, other takeaways, I'll get the testing clinic scheduled. I think we'll target April 2nd for that. So that'll be two weeks from now where we will do a testing clinic and I will talk to you all later. Thank you. Can we have the Shane clap? You gotta be unmuted.